Greetings, everybody. And today we're going to be finding the inverse Laplace transform of one over S squared plus one, but squared. And we're going to be using this nice formula that we've derived in a previous video that involves the sum of the residues. Um, and notice we can use that formula for this function because this function is of the form P divided by Q, where P and Q are polynomials, and the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. So to apply this formula, first of all, we have to know where the poles are so we can calculate these residues. So for the poles, let's start by splitting or factoring out this denominator. Notice that S squared plus one can be written as S plus I and S minus I. And since we're swearing everything, we might as well swear both of these factors. So clearly we can see that the poles are at S is equal to plus or minus I. And these are actually order two poles because we have the linear factors that are being squared. All right, so we know that where the poles are, we can apply this formula just to sum the residue. So first of all, we have the residue at S is equal to I of the function. I'm just call, gonna call this function in here F of S times E to the S T. And then we have to add the residue at S is equal to minus I of F of S times e to the st like so. All right, and notice these are order two poles, so let's apply the formula for residues at higher order poles. And if we do that, well, if you recall the formula, it's equal to one divided by, now we take the order of the pole, which is two, we subtract one from that, and we take the factorial of that, that's the first part. Now we have the limit as s approaches the poles, as s approaches i, of, now we take a derivative with respect to S. Um, technically, we take the two minus one derivative, so order of the pole minus one, um, but because two minus one is one, that's just the first derivative. Then we have S minus the pole. So we take that factor and then we raise it to the order of the pole, which is two in this case. And then we just multiply by a function. So that's, I'm gonna write this as e to the ST divided by, now, instead of S squared plus one, but the whole thing squared, I'm gonna write it in this factored form. So that's going to be S plus I squared, S minus I squared. So this is the residue at S is equal to I. Now we're going to do the same thing for the second residue. So we're going to add it now, once again, that's an order two pole. So we have one over two minus one factorial limit as S approaches the pole, so as S approaches minus I, we take the two minus one derivative with respect to S, and then we have S minus the pole, but because the pole is minus I, that's just S plus I squared, so to the power of the pole, or to the power of the order of the pole. Then we multiply by E to the ST divided by the denominator, so S plus I but squared and S minus I, but squared. And now notice that on both of these terms, we have some factors that can cancel out these S minus I's over here and this S plus I's over here. And let's just rewrite this a little bit nicer. Two minus one, that's just one factorial. That is just one. So we have the limit as S approaches I of the derivative with respect to S of E to the ST divided by S plus I, but squared. And then we have plus the limit as S approaches minus I derivative. And we have E to the ST divided by S minus I, but squared. All right, so now we have to evaluate the derivatives of these two things. Notice that we have the quotients. So let's use the quotients rule. So if we do so, we're going to get the limit as S approaches I. Now taking the derivative of this thing, let's call this denominator V, and let's call the numerator U. Well, the quotient rule says that we have V times U dash, so that's going to be S plus I squared times U dash, which is T times E to the ST. We're differentiating this function with respect to S, so this T is a constant, it jumps down to the front. Now we have minus U times V dash, and that's going to be e to the st, that's our u, and then v dash, or just using some power rule, that's going to be two times s plus i. And then we divide this all by v squared, but since this is s plus i squared, we're going to have s plus i, but raised to the fourth power. And now we're going to do the exact same thing over here. Let's call this denominator v, let's call this numerator u, and we're going to add the limit as S approaches minus I 
of VU dash, so that's going to be S minus I squared times T e to the ST. And then we're going to subtract off U times V dash, but that's going to be E to the ST. And then V dash is going to give us two times S minus I. And we divide this all by S minus I, but raised to the fourth power. All right, so this is looking quite nice so far. Notice that there are some things we can cancel out because we have these factors of S plus I's everywhere and S minus I's everywhere. So in particular, notice that we can cancel out a factor of S plus I everywhere. So this two is gonna be gone and this four is going to turn into a three. And same deal over here, we can factor out, um, we can cancel out a factor of S minus I this two is going to be gone and this four is going to turn into a three. And so now we can take the limits everywhere. Um, so this is going to give us, well, first of all, as S approaches I, we're going to have two I over here. So first of all, two I times T E to the S T minus two. And this S is going to turn into an I actually. So E to the I T. And then over here we have minus two E to the I T and this factor is gone so we don't have to worry about that and this is divided through by now if we plug i into here we're going to get 2i but 2i cubed that's just going to give us 8 and then i cubed that's going to be minus i so i'll write it like this now now we're going to do the same thing over here we're going to add well we're going to have minus i minus i over here that's minus 2i t e to the, now s is going to turn into minus i, so minus i t, minus 2 e to the minus i t, and we divide this through by, now plugging minus i into here, we're going to get minus 2 i cubed, minus 1 cubed is a negative, so that's still there, 2 cubed is 8, and i cubed is minus i, so that's going to give us an i, and we can cancel out over here. All right, and we can simplify a couple of things over here. These twos will cancel out, then this eight will turn into a four. Again, same thing over here. These twos are gone, this eight will turn into a four. And what exactly are we left with? Let's actually split up these fractions a little bit. So if we look at the first term over here, we have t e to the i t, and these i's over here will cancel each other out. So what we're left with over here is a t times e to the i t, Remember these i's cancel out, we still have this negative over here and we divide everything by four still. And then let's take a look at the second term over here. These i's are going to cancel out again and we're going to be left with a negative t times e to the minus i t. So all this stuff is still there. These i's are gonna cancel out, we're still left with this four. And now I'm going to look at the second term. So we have e to the i t, but we divide this by minus four. Um, but notice negative and negative over here will cancel each other out, leaving us with a plus e to the i t. And now notice that there's no i's over here, so we still have to keep the i on the denominator. So we still have four i. And then same deal over here, we have a negative e to the minus i t, and then we still have a four i, like so. All right, so very nice. And notice on these first two terms, we can factor out a negative t as well as a four, but instead of factoring out a four from the denominator, I'm just gonna factor out a two because we can actually turn this into a cosine function. So this is now equal to factoring out minus t over two. We're going to have left on the inside, e to the i t plus, e to the minus i t divided by two. And now over on this side, all I'm gonna factor out is a one half. So factor out in one half, we're going to have plus one half. And then on the inside, we're left with e to the i t minus e to the minus i t. And this is divided through by, well, we factored out the two from the denominator. That's just going to leave us with two i. And so now just to finish things off, I'm gonna write this term first. So that's going to be one half, this function will turn into a sine function, so that's sine of t. And then let's write this guy next, that's going to be minus t divided by two. And this whole thing over here, that's going to turn into cosine of t, and then we are done. That is the inverse Laplace transform of one over s squared plus one, but squared. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see everyone next time.